the first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the all-time greats, Robin Yount, is here on the Rich Eisen Show right now. How are you, Robin? I'm doing just fine, Rich. Thank you. How are you doing? What a pleasure to have you on this show. Thank you for calling in. Uh, it was 20 years ago just this past Sunday for your 3,000th hit. Were you aware of that? No, that, that's not possible. <laughs> your, your facts are a little off. But are you sure <laughs> about unless that? I got it, unless I got it during spring training. Oh, I got you. Well, it was just recent, at least, with the 3,000th hit. Uh, <laughs> it might have for... been 20 years ago, uh, last September or this oh. September or something okay. like that. But, well, in terms of I your... Know, I, well, I don't remember a lot of things, but I know it happened in September. Okay, there you go. So then I guess it's been 20 years since your 3,000th hit, as opposed to it okay. being celebrated uh, just recently. So with your 3,000th hit that was called by Bob Uecker right there, what, what do you recall from that night, Robin? Uh... You know, I remember uh, the game was uh, delayed. Mm -hmm. um, they they used the excuse. Everybody in the ballpark, the turnstiles were jammed and all of that. Right. Uh, come to find out, it was really uh, Mr. Selig and, uh, uh, at the time, one of the owners of the Texas Rangers, uh, soon to be President uh, Bush. Yeah. Were were I think that uh, Mr. Selig had just been announced the interim commissioner, and they were all at meetings somewhere to make that happen, and and flew in uh, together, but they couldn't get there uh, by the start of the game, so they delayed the game, but they blamed it on uh, too many fans. Ah, well, you're too popular, Robin. What what can I tell you? And and well, we... I don't know about that. No, but it no. Was, uh, <laughs> It was, you know, it was it was certainly one of the exciting moments in my uh, in my career. And just hearing the call uh, of it right there, Bob Euchre uh, with the call. Do you do you have a, a good favorite Bob Euchre story, Robin? You know, uh, Rich, there's there's so many, but it, the one thing I would say uh, about Bob Euchre is, if you think about uh, the number of guys, uh, and there's. Uh, uh, maybe a handful, if you go with Henry Aaron and uh, Molitor and myself and Raleigh Fingers and Sutton spend some time there. These guys all made the Hall of Fame despite Bob Buecher. You know, <laughs> I, I know for me personally, for me personally, yes. you know, I was shown the ropes by Bob Buecher and was still able to make the Hall of Fame. I'm not sure I get enough credit for that. But anyhow, um, <laughs> he is one of my closest friends today, which is, which is um, I tell people all the time, I met Bob Euchre when I was 18 years old mm -hmm. in 1974, and he's in his early 80s today and is the same guy today Fantastic. that he was in 1974 as far as sharp as a whip, he remembers stories one after another. Obviously, he is as funny a person as I've ever been around. You know, when he does those those movies, Major League, you know, he's sure. not even acting. That's the guy. <laughs> you know, that, that's literally the guy. And it's like he's stealing the money because he's he doesn't even, all he has to do is go out there and be himself. Yeah. But it, he's one of, like I say, what a wonderful guy, one of my close, close friends. Yeah, and he's still, he's still doing it. He's still, he's still yeah. great at it, too. I mean, he's... Yeah, there's no question. He's, been, he's had some health issues the mm -hmm. last uh, 10 years or so. He's, he's almost passed away a couple of times, but keeps on coming back. And uh, he, he doesn't travel nearly as much as he used to. But uh, still does all the home games in Milwaukee, and and I'll tell you what, he is the uh, he, he's as popular a brewer as there's ever been, and he never wore a brewer uniform. No, uh, Robin Yount joining me here on, on the Rich Eisen Show, uh, and Paul Molitor's doing a, did a bang up job in his first year as the skipper of the of the Minnesota Twins. When you were playing with Molitor, did you see a, a future manager? sitting right there? You know, I didn't I, I didn't know that he had that interest. You know, back when we were playing. Uh, he certainly has the brains for it, and he's got the, uh, I think, the rapport. He, he, I think he has the right uh, mix of uh, personality to, to deal with the players and uh, the media and the whole thing. And uh, you're right, he certainly did a, a, a great job. I, I don't think last year when the Twins started the season they had uh, – any real expectations or hopes to, to make the playoffs. And uh, I know they came 
right down to the wire and just missed out. So, uh, yeah, he, he certainly did a great job in his first year, and uh, hopefully that's a, uh, the start of something uh, uh, a long, a long managing career like his base, like his playing career was. Sure. What do you think of the current state of the Brewers, Robin? You know, it's. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows. We're so young. Uh, we there's been a lot of turnover in the last uh, two years, and uh, I guess uh, for the lack of a better term, it, it looks to me from the outside looking in that uh, we're going through some, uh, you know, some rebuilding here. And uh, but you know what? It, it, what I've seen in other franchises over the last uh, ten or fifteen years, and the commissioner, uh, well, the commissioner that I, that I know well, but yes. Selig, that is now uh, in, uh, is retired, but he talks a lot about parity these days. And um, when when you have uh, the parity and the balance that's going on, it seems like in Major League Baseball today. It seems like teams, it, it doesn't take that long to rebuild anymore. So I'm hoping that that's the case in Milwaukee and that we can uh, uh, get back to competitiveness uh, very quickly. You know, normally I ask questions that I think I know the answer to, but I do not know the answer to this one. I'll ask it anyway. What's your relationship with Ryan Braun like, Robin Young? Uh, you know, I, I've known Ryan since he was uh, a minor leaguer with the organization. Um, and, you know, I... I He's one heck of a player. I know that he he certainly has had his issues uh, with the substance stuff, but uh, you know he's he's not the only one in today's game. And uh, hopefully he's learned a, a hard lesson and uh, you know and and moves on from it. I, I know that's his goal, and he he would love to put it behind him. Um, but that's easier said than done. He's tr he's probably tried to put it behind him, but I'm sure the fans in other cities <laughs> won't let him. But, uh, hey, that's the price you pay when you uh, choose to do uh, some of those things, and uh, he's just going to have to live with that. Hall of Famer Robin Yao joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Bryce Harper, uh, the reigning MVP of the National League, uh, mm -hmm. told ESPN the magazine uh, that baseball is tired Robin calls it a tired sport because you can't express yourself. And to paraphrase what he said, is that maybe baseball should have players that uh, emote when they're running the bases or have pitchers who pump their fists after strikeouts, and that it shouldn't be taken personally, and that the unwritten rules are are kind of tamping down personalities. Well, what do you say to something like that, Robin? <laughs> that's an that's an interesting comment. That that that's coming from today's players. Boy, what they do today sure wouldn't have uh, uh, gone very far, you know, 20 years ago. So if, if he has that attitude today, it's uh, it's certainly changed because uh, what I watch is uh, would have been totally unacceptable 20 years ago with uh, with a lot of the things that go on. But uh, hey, the, the times change. Uh, uh, it's not just in baseball; it's in life in life in general. And uh, I think the the way people uh, conduct themselves in all walks of life uh, is different today than it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. Sure, so that's just, but uh, that's just uh, has more to do with the generations, I think. So I guess what do you see that you think wouldn't pass muster? When you were oh, there's playing, a lot, of, <laughs> there's a, lot, a lot of bat flipping and styling and stuff that uh, that, in my opinion, they they are allowed to do. I'm surprised he says that. He, they must not be able to do as much as he would like, but they sure do a lot more and uh, of those antics, if you want to uh, use that word, on the mound and uh, uh, around the bases. So uh, I don't, I don't, I don't feel too, too sorry for him. In, in in that comment, because that's interesting, because I really do love the way the guy plays. He's one of my favorite players uh, that plays the game today uh, uh, to watch, because uh, I really enjoy the way he plays the game. He plays, uh, really plays his butt off every time he goes out there. He and uh, and Mike Trout, for me, are, are probably the, the off the top of my head, the two most exciting players out there. Yeah, I mean, Trout, what he does every year, in Southern California for the Angels. It just seems he gets better every yeah. year. And, and people, you know, obviously the name Mickey Mantle always gets brought up with him all the time, Robin. Yeah, I don't even, I've never thought that's very fair when you try to compare <sighs> players, especially to, 
to different generations. The, the, the games are, are, are so different. But, uh, you know, obviously that's not a bad thing for Mike if he's being compared no, to Mickey No, of course not. Would you, uh, last question for you, Robin. Would you want to yeah. vote for, for the Hall of Fame? Should, should Hall of Famers get a vote on who gets into Cooperstown? Uh, you know, in a way, Rich, we do. It's, the system has changed a little bit. Uh, we used to get a vote, but more, uh, but as a veteran, veterans committee vote uh, for guys that didn't get in through the media. Uh, now we just nominate players, and it goes to a smaller committee to decide. So we do, we we do get to uh, we have a little say in it, but it's uh, it's for the players that were passed over. Uh, by the sports writers or, or and everyone else that gets the opportunity to vote. So I guess the, the answer to your question, yeah, I, I would certainly uh, relish the opportunity to vote if I if I had the chance, I would I would do it. But it's uh, it's just not our the way it's set up right now. How's your golf but, game? But, but like I say, we do we do still have a say. Sure. How's your golf game? How's it going? Uh, right this minute, uh, non-existent. Non-existent. Or non-existent, I should say. It's, Is it true? I, I broke my hand real bad a couple oh, months ago. Sorry so to hear been, that. Uh, yeah, all right. It'll be fine one day. Well, is it? <laughs> Is it true that you once were thought about leaving Major League Baseball to go to the PGA Tour? Is that a true story? Uh, that was quite a bit of an exaggeration. You know, I, it was a nice dream and uh, not anything I, I, I seriously considered as a uh, as a baseball player. Okay. Um, it uh, it was a story that got blown well out of proportion in spring training when I was <laughs> had come to spring training uh, with a with, with a minor injury from a dirt bike accident prior to spring training and was young enough to be scared to death to tell the general manager what happened <laughs> and made a offhand comment to uh, Timmy Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, the guy next door <laughs> to me in, in the locker room, that, man, if I can't play baseball anymore, I might have to try golf or something. And, then... and proceeded the next couple of days to go AWOL because I didn't know what to do. And that story went quickly from uh, being AWOL to wanting to quit baseball and Unbelievable. Be, uh, How be about a that? PGA player. I don't know many three handicappers that make a whole lot of money. Out of <laughs> to and, that was the, and that was the best I ever was. So, again, that was, uh, that was blown well out of proportion. Robin, thanks for call calling in. Really uh, loved watching you play when you played, and, uh, and I really enjoyed our conversation. I hope we get to do it again. Yeah, I, I would too, Rich. Thanks a lot. Terrific. For and again, and congrats on on your great career in spite of Bob Uecker. Congrats on that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, You're I welcome. just wanted to make sure everybody realized what a challenge it was. Thank you. Thank you. That's Robin Young. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.